Hello, hello! Welcome back to another video. I am Rish. I call this getting emotionally damaged in a month where people should celebrate love. But then again, love comes in all forms, does it not? So, let's dive into the books. I read It Ends With Us, which as seen and heard all over the world, actually, even now, pinagdiribatihan pa rin kung paano ba dapat. And I wonder why there are still hashtag Team Ryle. Because, oh my god, you enablers, or should I worry for you and your tendency to be a possible victim of any abuse, cloth, and beautiful outer appearance? In this story, we have Lily Blue, who is from Italy, and moved to Boston, worked her ass off, opened her own flower shop, and just continued to work her hardest to be out of the miserable place she had grown up in. She then meets Ralph and Kate, a handsome neurosurgeon with some issues, to whom she had some instant attraction to. How can she not respond? This God of a neurosurgeon resident who says he isn't the commitment type verbalizes that he likes to have a one night stand with her. He would even get down on his knees and beg for it. Oh, um, not really attractive, to be honest. And then, when everything seems to fall into place for the both of them, she comes across her first love, Atlas Cargan, the boy who and cared for her despite also trying to get out of the mess the world put him into. Then, Riley is showing her red flags that's making her worry if she's just overreacting or are these episodes the beginning of a relationship that she should get out of. I'm just gonna put it out there, it's not a love triangle. It just so happens that there are two males involved in Lily's life. One of the present, the other from the past, who she meets again years after. And that is how the narrative happens. An almost alternate timeline between the past and the present, told through Lily's journal entries during her teen life. Ayong Yang, the usual dear diary. So she pretends to write to Anna instead, thus, favorite Yang. And this is where we get introduced to Atlas and what his role is in her life and how that part would soon complicate her future self. And also, if you wish to read this, there are trigger or content warnings. They can be triggering to you very deep caution. Because here, we get a glimpse of an example of a domestic violence, of gaslighting, of trauma. I wish the ending was a bit different. I am happy for Lily, but there's a part that I wish was written differently. She could have had more self-love moments. Anyway, don't forget to read the author's note. Reflect about your feelings about the characters. Don't focus on the physical appearance. And lastly, staying isn't always the right and healthy option to save a family. I rated It Ends With Us 4 out of 5 stars. Then I told myself, Sure, I shed some tears, but it wasn't that heavy. Kaya naman. So, I read All Your Perfects next. And boy, oh boy. This is a whooping 5 out of 5 for me. Maybe I exaggerated, but then that's how I feel. I ugly cried for this one. We are introduced to Quinn and Graham, meeting for the first time in a very awkward situation. Their partners cheating on them with each other. But as awkward as it was, there was an attraction between them, and in the present, they are already seven years married. This story also alternates between two timelines the then and the now. In one chapter, giggle, kiligin ka, and I guess also cringe at how seemingly perfect their relationship was starting out. And then, you dip low in the next chapter and wonder why, how, where, what, 
And is it a who that threatened their marriage? The tension builds up as you flip from one chapter to the next. You see how the problem started and maybe why it escalated. I love Graham more and was not as invested in Quinn. I feel for her, but the way her thought process just annoyed me. Because the issue was not hers alone. Her feelings were valid. She had every right to feel as she should. Again, content warning for one important issue in the story and it is about infertility. Both of them injured and suffered, but they dealt with it differently. Cried for the one who suffered directly, and then I cried some more for the one who held on. So, after crying at around 3 a.m., I decided to read something else. And it was perfect timing because the love hypothesis by Ari Hazelwood was just delivered. Is it worth the hype? Yes and no. If you love the Grumpy Sunshine Book Pro Pen, yes it is. If you like some fake dating, again, yes. If you like sweet fun and then some smutty scenes about a couple in STEM, again, yes, it is worth the read. I enjoyed reading The Love Hypothesis, and I rated it a 3.75 over 5. Because, despite my enjoyment, there were times where I was confused as to how Olive made stupid and non-scientific waste decisions in her personal life. After all, aware siya sa mga tropes. She was supposed to be smart, she loved rom-coms. As for the male lead character, Adam Carlson, he may be an ass, but he has better at constructive comments or criticisms in their research. I mean, the way he explains it to Olive about how he dealt with the uh, other PhD grad students was like understandable. Because I know some who just criticize you and expects you to be 100% perfect. So they don't really help you with it. You just, you know, yun. Pag sabihan ka lang, mali yan, ganito, ganyan. Pero wala namang proper na tulong. So yeah, Adam Carlson was a good one. Although I have problems with him constantly being described as broad, he's tall, okay, parang, ano ba siya? Kakoy? Puno? Anyway, after that palate cancer, I said, I'm okay na. My heart and soul are fine now. It has a dose of happy, feel-good love. I can go on and have another Colin Hoover book. And chose Confess next. So by this time, I already noticed the trope she writes about or is comfortable in. First, she writes about things that can or is inspired by real life. Second, she writes about instant love even though sometimes the blurb would say it's not an instant attraction, but it actually still is. Third, there are triggers or content warnings in relation to the first one. In spite of contests starting out cute and had a wonderful concept, like there are some all artworks here, the story sort of takes a dark turn as well. I am behind Auburn, the female character, as she tries to toughen up for her son. I am happy Owen got the girl in the end. Yeah, he's the male new character in the story. How and what sacrifices he made, and what bad decisions he also did that threatened the budding relationship he has with Auburn are all in the story. And feel free to read it and find out. Like all your perfects, the male lead character here is more likable for me. Trigger warning? Um, douchebags? Joke, but yes, yeah, some hints of domestic violence also, drug use, and addiction. And um, is lying to an ignorant teen mother to be considered a content warning? If so, yeah, uh, read, it, read this one with caution again. So, 33.75 over 5. And then because I was irritated at the other guy of Confess, 
the pushy brother of Auburn's dead high school boyfriend who is being creepily possessive of her when he was not even the current boyfriend, I decided to listen to The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This was another 3.75 out of 5. Another enjoyable enemies to lovers read and fake dating trope. I do like it if the guy actually secretly likes the girl first and if because they have poor communication or social skills, their feelings are expressed in the opposite way. I wonder if all enemies to lovers are like this. If so, come in the comment section below please so I could try and look them up. This is also a slow burn um, story so if you're not so good with that kind, I'd say I wish their moments as a couple could have happened maybe around 60% and so maybe the conflict that happened at the last 30 would be better written. I mean at least Catalina could have grown up a little or handled that conflict better. I don't know if either these female characters are just made irritatingly flawed or I'm just being biased towards the male leads for being gentle, manly, yet awkward or because it's they're written by women. Who knows? Then, I moved to another Colin Hoover book because this was supposed to be my theme for this month, right? But I'm gonna end it with this one and maybe read the others later on this year or maybe next year again. But the last one I read for February was Ugly Love. And I will say it was a 2.75. The 0.75 is for Miles' backstory. Miles' backstory was sad and legit reason why the, the title is called Ugly Love. Other than that, I couldn't really connect. The Chukchakan felt cringy at times, or most of the times. Um, or I can say, I listened to this in 1.3 to 1.5 times speed, so that's saying something. But if you are looking for or just want smutty and sticky romance, sure, give Ugly Love a try. Then I read a different genre because I thought I need a general palette cancer this time. So I picked up Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Last year, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and loved it. But Daisy Jones, it was a weird feeling. I gave this a flip 4 over 5. I mean, objectively, I like it. I'm here for the atmosphere. I find the narrative refreshing. You know, like it's in an interview format. So, yeah, it was a good experience. And being able to pull off a writing about a fictional iconic 1970s rock group and even made you believe for a brief moment that they exist is really good. However, Unlike how I feel for Freddie Mercury in the movie Bohemian Rhapsody, I am not so invested by Daisy as I thought I would. She's a flawed character, of course she is. Despite growing up in a world where she can get anything she wants physically, she craves for one thing, a purpose in life, or being wanted, because her parents didn't give that to her. Daisy is portrayed as a confident, headstrong female character and has a little may care attitude. But, well, she made choices that I couldn't really stand by. Even if she tries to rationalize her feelings and decisions, and even if she was the best singer songwriter, because that thing with Billy, that is just a no. Kind na walang physical going on between them, still a no. This story, despite showing and telling us about the struggles and success of Daisy Jones and The Six, actually, um, it feels like a memoir of an AD member that wasn't acknowledged but was there with them all the way and have probably prevented the band from spiraling. And that's Camilla. 
And so last week I listened to a YA rom com titled Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey, which is another four out of five. This doesn't have a high rate of good reads, but this just goes to show how people have different tastes and maybe the mood or the season or the state of mind are all variables for that outcome. Still, I like it enough to give a 4. This is an almost meet cute in a bookstore to enemies to lovers. Both characters like each other at the same time. Boy is described as sending girl signals and girl is thinking on how to better flirt with him until she learned he works for the enemy. Madeline Moore just wants to work for their families in the bookstore and hopes to one day inherit it, but then that may not happen. She found out that their bookstore is on the verge of closing down. She hates the bookstore across them, Prolo, because they are stealing their potential customers, and because they so decided to set up their stores across from theirs, when Prolo could just choose a different area. And apparently, she also hates Jasper, the cute supervisor of the store, who she almost gave her number to. Listening to the audiobook, the narrator made Madeline's personality understandable. She's a 17-year-old girl with some abandonment issues to deal with and who finds the family bookstore her safe place. So, when she acted self-centered and annoying and childish, I understood why. She also didn't stay irritatingly bratty all throughout the book. So, I'm cool with that. The third that conflict was also understandable. The ending was nice. It closed the story pretty well. Anyway, those are the books I've read for the month of February. I chose to get myself emotionally damaged and then learn that you shouldn't binge read an author or maybe it's just these books. Have you read any of these books too? Or are you planning to read some of them? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you have some awesome romance books in your arsenal, I would like to hear about those too. Thank you for sticking with me until the end. Stay safe and see you on the next vlog. Bye!